Plus. Mysterious deaths in a bizarre religious sect. They do act as though they're from another world. Known as end times. Followers of this man who says that doomsday is at hand. Jesus came to me, he spoke to me, and he told me that he had set the end. Inside the group, 14 children have died. Why is it happening? Tom Gerald investigates. Hidden cameras take you inside. They're convinced the end is near. Those stories tonight, March 6th, 1992. And we begin with an undercover investigation of this group known as End Timers. Their leader is a self-proclaimed holy man. He mesmerizes followers with the message that only he can take them to the next world. But tonight, 2020 enters his heaven on earth and finds worshipers seemingly under a spell, families divided, and children needlessly dying. To piece this story together, we've located and talked to former members of End Timers and to parents whose loved ones remain in the group. And they detail a disturbing pattern of mysterious and now some believe even criminal behavior. As Tom Jarrell reports, those who have joined End Timers seem to be from the mainstream, but did they know what was in store? God is City, Florida, has almost always been tolerant of religious fundamentalism. They've welcomed nearly a hundred congregations here of virtually every religious sect. Presbyterians, Baptists, and others no one outside of northern Florida has heard much about. But the largest congregation of all, a group called the End Timers, and its leader, Brother Charles Meade, has nearly everyone worried. Longtime Lake City minister, Ed Montgomery. Uh, the end time has come as close to being a full cult as, as I guess we've ever experienced, I've ever experienced in my ministry, uh, in that they are self-ruled. One person tells them what to do, how to do it, when to do it. That person is Charles Meade, a reclusive 76-year-old who does not believe in organized churches. He preaches every Sunday and chooses his followers carefully, screening out skeptics. The end timers' religious services are by invitation only, so we used a hidden camera over several days to follow the group. There is an evangelical fervor when Meade preaches his message that the world will end soon and only his followers will be saved. We're getting them people together in a time of trouble and darkness upon this earth here like man has never assembled before together in God, walking in the spirit of believing God's word and getting all healed up and set free and building up an army in this end time for the return of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, we're on our way now. We're on our way. We're on our way. He's on our side. He's on Charles Meade gathered his flock in the early 1970s from the fields of South Dakota, Indiana, Illinois, and Montana. Then about five years ago, he told them the end of the world was near and they must move to their promised land in northern Florida, the only place, he said, which would survive doomsday, a worldwide famine. Brother Charles Meade and about a thousand of his followers came here to Lake City, Florida, a small town just south of the Georgia border. They bought houses, took jobs, and set up businesses throughout this city of 45,000. Outwardly, they seem like ideal citizens, hardworking, law-abiding, and church-going. But uniquely, they kept to themselves and became a community within the community. We refer to them as ETs, and the rest of us are the normals. Extraterrestrials? They do, uh, in many ways, act as though they're from an another world and they are trying to create that world on, on Earth. In, in many ways, this place has become a never-never land. When Sandra Smith investigated the end timers, she suspects, but police cannot prove, the group retaliated in a brutal way. I walked out of my house and found my yard cat's kittens, all five of them, beaten to death, stomped on, and their heads ripped off, piled in a neat pile by the sidewalk where I couldn't miss them as I came to unlock the shop. While Brother Meade has never been charged with a crime, those fearful of the end-timers see similarities between him and the Reverend Jim Jones, 
a cult leader who died after killing 900 of his devoted servants with poison punch in Guyana. Those similarities, followers are asked to leave their hometowns and abandon their family roots, isolating themselves from parents or grandparents to follow only their spiritual leader. They believe that just one man, Brother Mead, is their only source of salvation. And they hold secret prayer meetings and rituals at remote sites, including this one near an abandoned swamp outside Lake City. By night, the bonfires roar as his followers listen. Here's a typical sermon from Brother Mead. He claims he has met Jesus Christ face to face. Jesus came to me, he spoke to me loud and clear with an audible voice, and he told me then he had set me in, and it was so plain, I cried, I wept. He and his ministers preached that women should be subservient to men, and some girls enter prearranged marriages as young as 13. Let the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety. God with gold and pearls and all this kind of stuff scooped up all over, come in looking nice, looking fresh and good for the, your husband and for the Lord and for God's people. Meade claims that prayer, not doctors, will heal his followers. I've been a-walking in perfect health. I never even had an aspirin go down me. I've never had a cough drop in my mouth. I don't have a thing but the Spirit of God. Many of the end timers leaders attended Lincoln High School in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Back in the 1970s, like today, they were among the best and brightest students, looking for a fundamentalist but independent religious path. Joni Clark was one of them, but has since left the end timers. These were definitely not misfits. These were mainstream young people who had come out of their schools as leaders in their communities, in their churches, and certainly in their schools. Joni married her high school sweetheart, the star basketball player and class leader, Gary Cook. Both of them became close confidants of Brother Meade and his wife. Joni and Gary had to cut all contacts with their family to join the end timers. Sandy and Chuck Huber, who also live in Sioux Falls, have not seen their two children or grandchildren since they joined Meade. Well, as long as they're in the end timers, we won't be able to see them. Right. They will not let us see them. They, they won't even yeah. see us. Parents have went down there, grandparents. They get the cops called on, they, they're trespassing, get the door slammed in their face. So what's it like with two children, 13 grandchildren, in the end timers? It is a void, a large void. If you lose a son or a daughter to death, you know, you put them away and you grieve. This is an ongoing grief grieving process because it never ends. Do you pray, do you hope, do you dream that one day you'll all get back together? Yes, we do. The Hubers and others are particularly worried about how the end timers treat children. A cornerstone of Charles Mead's message is that prayer is stronger than medicine to cure people and illness is the act of the devil. Mead says beware of physicians, they may inject Satan's poison. So nearly every end timer's child is born at home they seldom are inoculated for childhood diseases and virtually never visit a doctor. October 1990, a 16-year-old boy was rushed to North Florida Regional Hospital and nearly died of complications from malnutrition. March 1989, a four-day-old baby was rushed to a Lake City hospital. She died from a nosebleed that experts say could have easily been cured by an injection of vitamins. November 1991, the parents of four-year-old Sonia Hernandez stand accused of manslaughter in the death of their daughter. So far, 14 children and three adults have died, all followers of Brother Charles Meade. As a devoted end-timer, Joni Clark gave birth at home to her daughter Libby. Neither received medical care, even though the child was premature and underweight. Finally, in the eighth month of the pregnancy, I went into labor. Who was there? Just Gary, just my husband. Um, he stood there and absolutely screamed. He was horrified, terrified, didn't know what to do. Um, he stood there praying and screaming. I was able to go ahead and deliver her, but she was a very sick little baby. Uh, she only weighed about 3 pounds, 12 ounces. What happened to your child? We were bathing her in the bathroom and she stopped breathing. And at this point, we called the Meads right away. 
they said, well, little tiny babies that are premature sometimes forget to breathe. And so um, they more or less chastised me for showing fear or concern. The baby went through several spells that later that day and that evening when she quit breathing. And um, I have to stop with that. She didn't live. Joni Clark is convinced that her baby would have lived had she given birth in a hospital. She argues Brother Mead treated women and children as if they were disposable. Do you think that Brother Mead cares about children dying? He is very calloused. In the deaths of children, he is consciousless. He, um, his basic philosophy is if you, have, if you lose one, you'll get another one. 2020 has obtained these documents that show just how gruesome the cases involving end timers children can be. Michael David Bomer died March 15, 1989, age four days. After it was too late, his mother called 911. Um, our brand new baby, we don't think it's breathing. It had a nose for the second day. We were just really coming around. He was doing a whole lot better. And, um, it's baby now. We just need something to come out right away. He had, um, a genetic problem. It was a, a lack of a, an abil inability for his blood to clot. They stuffed cotton up his nose and they prayed over him uh, and they watched him but they never went to a doctor and the bleeding continued for four days until he died. Ann Connor, a Lake City businesswoman and mother of four, has documented what's happening to end timer children. In that case, had they sought medical attention quickly, could the child have been saved? One shot of vitamin K would have saved his life. These documents from the chief medical examiner confirm that diagnosis, but the state chose not to press charges against the parents. The mayor of Lake City, unlike many of his constituents, has defended the end timers' right to practice faith healing, even if children die. You're quoted as having said, a few children may have to die in order to have freedom of religion. A very controversial quote. Yeah, that's uh, right. Do you stand by that quote still? I think if we're going to have freedom of religion, you can't tell people when to stop praying. Which means babies will die? Certainly. Some babies will die, but more babies die in the hospital than have died from being prayed over. When an end timer is rushed to a hospital, they're generally in bad shape. William Carl Myers was rushed here on October 23, 1990. This police report obtained by 2020 described the 16-year-old as suffering from liver failure kidney failure and a large tumor on his heart. According to this evaluation, the boy's parents did not seek medical attention for him, even though he had lost nearly 50 pounds in six months. His body had broken down because of his uh, starvation to the point that his feet were so swollen that they literally burst open and fluid was just draining from his feet. His, his parents said that they they let him lay on the couch with buckets under his feet, dripping into these buckets because um, they didn't want to mess up the house or the carpet. Myers lived, but even though his parents pleaded guilty to child neglect and are serving probation, he's back living in their end timer home. Sonia Hernandez died September 27, 1990, age four years. She was 14 pounds when she died. Um, a, a skeleton of the child that age weighs 13 pounds. Her parents are charged with manslaughter and have pled not guilty. Their defense lawyer is Dennis Roberts. The child was never able to walk, talk, or hold her head up and was also diagnosed as being deaf as well as blind. So I would say the child had serious problems, life-threatening problems from birth. Do you know if the child had any medical attention after they moved here and settled and adopted the lifestyle of the end timers? I could not comment on that. What bothers me most is that their children are at risk of, of suffering from illnesses or even death due to lack of medical attention. You believe then that their right to religion ends when the life of a child is threatened? Yes, I do. I think they're, they have the, constantly have the right to believe anything they want to. But when practicing those beliefs, they cause harm to another one, whether it's your child, my child, or their child, then their rights, their rights end right there. In South Dakota and in Montana, the end-timers were investigated for child abuse. 
But the prosecutors found the end timers practice of faith healing was protected by state laws. In Florida, prosecutors Jerry Blair and Scott Cup have started to take action against individual end timers who don't seek medical care for their children. I would hope that rather than sending people to prison and giving people uh, felony conviction records, that what we might be able to do here are save children's lives. I think the message is becoming clear, though, that uh, if children die, regardless of uh, the reason, that there may, in fact, be a, a price to pay down the road. Does Brother Mead bear any responsibility for these uh, problems with children, considering his religious teachings? Well, I think he does. But the law does not uh, prohibit the exercise of speech or opinions. The law only prescribes certain actions. And uh, up to this point in time, so far as I know, he has not committed any actions that are prosecutable under Florida law. Some loyal adult followers, like Meade's own wife, Marie, have also suffered. She went through an agonizing period before she died from untreated breast cancer. Because of the cancer, she had shrunk down to all of about 80 pounds, and out of weakness, she just simply fell on the floor, and when she fell, she broke her hip. And all she could say to him was, I'm sorry. Just two weeks after his wife's death, Brother Meade married again. Last January, this woman died. 30-year-old Wanda Handy, the mother of five children, hanged herself from a tree in the backyard. According to friends, she was apparently despondent that she could not leave the end timers and take her children. Are these victims of brainwashing? Absolutely. I prefer the term mind control. One of the primary tenets that's here in Charles Mead's belief system, if you're going to be a part of it, you must not question him at all. To do so is one of the most um, ultimate sins that you could commit. Good morning. We're with ABC News 2020. Uh, we'd like to talk with Brother Mead if he's in today, please. During our investigation of the end timers, 2020 went to Brother Mead's luxurious home and attempted to speak with him and his top aides. Can we talk to you a second? They went back inside. But no one would agree to be interviewed from the group. We did receive this letter from one top minister, the former husband of Joni Clark. Gary Cook said, quote, your cameras will never be allowed to invade the privacy of our homes. Neither will your cameras ever capture the heart of the end time ministry, which has given far beyond what your minds could comprehend. So far, Brother Meade and his followers maintain it's their religious right to keep children away from medical treatment. And as usual, Brother Meade exhorts his followers, in this case, the children. Obey your parents in all things, everything that they tell you to do, because they won't tell you wrong. If the parents is living the life, they'll never tell you wrong. It'll always be right. Tom, it's difficult to understand why educated, enlightened people would want to join a group like this. Barbara, this movement seemed to take root and take hold during that period after the Vietnam War and during the Watergate era when there was so much disenchantment with society. These people wanted a strong moral compass in their life and they turned to the end timers. States do have laws of uh, protecting freedom of religion, Absolutely. right? Okay, now what happens if the freedom of religion comes into conflict with the welfare of people, in these case, children? The state where that's been most evident is South Dakota. When the end timers were primarily based in South Dakota, the legislature took a look at babies dying, at the freedom of religion, so-called shield laws. They repealed with a unanimous vote the laws in that state so that the babies would have some rights over religion. But that's the only state that did? So far. And not in Florida? Not at all. There's not very much one can add. Thank you, Tom. Coming up, bank robbers. Video cameras record them in action, and most of them do get caught, yet they keep trying. In Los Angeles, bank robbers are as common as celebrities. John Stossel reveals their methods of operation, everything but how to get away with it. Stay with us.